All right, recruiting is going fast and heavy here for Boston College. We're going to get into all the details, give you the names you need to know, and where the Eagles stand on some of their biggest targets. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Locked on BC. I'm your host, AJ Black, editor of Eagle Insider, part of the 247 Sports Network. Today's episode is about that recruiting. We're going to get into the offensive and defensive line and why Bill O'Brien has put an emphasis on those in his first recruiting class. We're going to look at Daryl Wyatt, the wide receivers coach and the magic he's pulling. And we'll switch a little to basketball in the transfer portal and ask, What's going on with the Eagles in the basketball transfer portal? It's a busy episode. We're going to get kicking it off right now. So if you've been following along on Eagle Insider, you know that the names of the official visitors are starting to file in. These are the kids that are going to be taking their big visits in June. The The recruits that have gone beyond just getting an offer, gone beyond just watching a practice and are really serious about their relationship with Bill O'Brien and the staff at Boston College. These are recruits that you would consider are warm towards Boston College. And so one of, you know, as we start to learn the names, there are two really big themes that have come up. The first theme is Bill O'Brien clearly sees the emphasis that he needs to place on winning in the trenches. Now that's the offensive line and the defensive line. And if you look at some of the offers that he's made and some of the visitors that he's had, a lot of these recruits are guys that are in the trenches. The big one that I have talked about before is Chris Vigna. Chris Vigna is from Bergen Catholic, one of those big schools in New Jersey that I felt like Jeff Halfley never really um, prioritized, but now it seems like there's a ton of Bergen Catholic kids coming towards BC for visits. They just had one, their kicker on, on Tuesday was just on campus, but they've had quarterbacks. Uh, this is a school that's uh, run by Vito Campanile. You remember Anthony Campanile, who's working with Jeff Affley now with the Packers. That's his brother. He, he's the coach there. Vigna is, is a uh, much sought after kid. Uh, with offers from Pitt, Rutgers, Syracuse, uh, you know, any of the Northeast schools, a lot of Big Ten schools are looking at him. Uh, He's taken an official visit and an offensive lineman that it's just, he oozes Boston College. This is a kid that would be a perfect fit for the Eagles. He's a three-star. I feel like he would, you know, I have, I, did I put a, I don't think I put a crystal ball in for him, but I'm pretty close to putting a crystal ball in for him. If he, if he takes his official visit. So, you know, you see kids like this, you see uh, Denzel Williams, who I'm going to get up on the screen right now. Denzel Williams, who is the um, one on the far left with the, um, with the Afro. He's another offensive lineman. And this kid comes from Stepanak in New York. Again, you're starting to see some themes here, right? New Jersey, New York, you're going to see more with Massachusetts some Pennsylvania, a lot of emphasis in this area. DJ Williams is another kid that has good offers. That's taking an official visit. I was on campus just a couple weeks ago. Uh, He's an offensive lineman. And then he came with his buddy, uh, Kadir, and I'm going to totally mess his name up. uh, Dembale. Dembale is a defensive lineman. So you got, the you got the offensive lineman, you get the defensive lineman, and he, they're both from Stepanak, which um, a lot of New York BC fans are telling me is a very popular school for undergraduates at BC. Um, and Archbishop Stepanak is got two coming for official visits. In addition to these two guys, you've seen guys like Aubrey Melvin, who is a defensive lineman from Maryland. Uh, again, the big theme I know a lot of folks want to know: Are any of these guys four stars? Now, do most of these guys have other power five interests? All of them do. All of them have power five interests. So at least 
that should get make you feel good. That every recruit that I've seen so far and that I've mentioned are guys that other programs want. So it's not just a BC thing. It's not just getting a diamond in the rough. You're getting you're getting some interest from guys on the offensive and defensive line that are going to be um want you know highly sought after. And, and of course, the big one on the defensive line is Tommy Rupley, who I think is going to be one of the biggest uh, battles that BC has. There's two, and we'll get in the offensive line in a second. Tommy Rupley is from Belmont Hills in Mass. I, Belmont Hills, the fact that they have so many guys that are in uh, college football recruiting right now is crazy because I, I don't think of B- Belmont Hills as a big football program, but man, they've got some good talent there. And Rupley... This is a guy that just got offered by Michigan State. He's got offers from Virginia, Penn State. um, And, you know, he's an edge. He's a pass rusher. uh, And he's going to be here for for an official visit, too. Then on the offensive side, there is Hardy Watts, another local recruit. So tons of offers and good quality recruits. I think that's what's really the, the emphasis here. And they are all in this catch area, right? You're seeing Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Bill O'Brien is making the offense and defensive line, for the most part, you get some kids that are going to come that are from different areas. But for the most part, it's a Northeast group. He's put that emphasis there. In a moment, I'm going to get into the other position, which is wide receivers we're going to talk about, which is completely the opposite. But in an area where you're going for those blue-collar guys, the guys that are going to grind, that are tough, that are going to battle and develop, you're going for that area of the country. And I think that's a good, solid strategy to go with. I I have been impressed so far with the with the with the uh, recruits that he's gone after, and I think he's had some success. Jeff Comisiong, the uh, defensive line coach, I feel like is a good he's a good recruiter. He's doing a good job connecting with the defensive line. Matt Applebaum doesn't have to do a whole lot because he's shown it on the on the field last year. Offensive linemen saw what BC did last year. It was almost a resurgence of O-line U. And now that you have Bill O'Brien on top of that, an NFL guy, it, it's like, this is easy stuff to, to get these offensive linemen to come and t- check out BC now. So good start there. They have not landed any commitments on the offense and defensive line yet. They've got a number of guys that are interested. We'll have to see how this team, this coaching staff closes on them. Because as I said, they all have an interest. We already saw Samson Owanha Onawaha from uh, Belmont Hills again in Massachusetts commit to Duke. Will BC have those struggles again? I'm interested to see how Bill O'Brien uh, reacts and, and handles some of these things. Cause I think um, that's going to be really telling if it's going to be kind of the same problems that Jeff Halfley and Steve Adazio had, or will his ability be able to transcend all of that? We'll get into that in a moment, but, In our second segment, Daryl Wyatt, wide receivers coach, he goes by, he goes to a beat of his own drum. And I'll explain what that means and why I think he is kind of the lone wolf of this uh, coaching staff in just a moment. Now, if you know me, you know I love my Amazon Fire Stick. Fire TV is your destination for sports TV. And all of your viewing experiences. In the Fire TV Stick, you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On, including... Your man, A.J. Black, here at Locked On BC. And most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. But again, go back and watch Locked On BC there. 
Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, game travel, cooking channels as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Locked on BC, I am your host, AJ Black. And we were just talking, we're talking recruiting here. We have experts in, on Locked on, uh, the Locked on Network uh, to, talk, to talk recruiting. And if you listen to any of the other channels, they have those guys on. But you're getting it straight from the horse's mouth here. I could have him, I could have those guys on. But I know BC recruiting better than anyone else. I talk to the staff, I talk to the recruits. I am as up to my elbows in this stuff as anyone out there. So when I tell you that Daryl Wyatt, the wide receivers coach for Boston College, is the most talented um, recruiter out there, or the one that is able to connect with his positional group the best, you got to listen to me on this. Daryl Wyatt last year had a, a number of big name wide receivers that were supposed to commit to BC. There was Josiah Martin, who was a borderline four star. There was uh, DeAndre Henry, who was a, who was a four star, and neither of them came here. Josiah Martin left when BC started tanking. Uh, DeAndre Henry, Keonde Henry, excuse me. There was another issue, and I'm not going to, you know, he uh, wasn't very truthful with the BC staff. That being said. Now that BC has Bill O'Brien, a, a NFL caliber coach who has had success, who has worked with some great offenses, wide receivers are starting to see what they could do uh, if they came to BC. You already saw this with the guy on the screen right now. That's Nedrick Bolden, Bolden um, cousin of Anquan Bolden, former NFL wide receiver. He's hanging with Mike Norvell there, um, a Florida wide receiver. Has BC had good success with Florida wide receivers? I don't know. Ask Zay Flowers about that. Uh, but the names that are coming up are names you're going to want to watch for as well. And there's two really big names that BC is and Daryl White has connected with that I think are really exciting. The first is Dane Jones. Dane Jones is the younger brother of Seth Jones, who was originally committed to BC to play football uh, during the Steve, Ad I think it was the Steve Adazio years and ended up decommitting. Uh, he ended up playing at Baylor. And then I think he went to like South Florida or FIU or one of those schools and, and ended his career. Dane Jones is a, uh, Eight, rated in 87. He's got an offer list of 14 schools, including Florida, Baylor, Arizona State, Kansas, BC. Um, who was the other ones? I lost it. Uh, Nebraska, Pitt, uh, Missouri, Kansas State. So he's got a ton of offers, but he's speedy. He is a track star. He ran a 200 meter of 23.38 and 23.73 last year. Um, and he has, he's a great talent. And I talked to him and I believe he's going to be taking an official visit to BC. So again, Texas wide receiver, got another big name right there, right? Will he end up going and checking out BC? That'll be something worth watching. Another name, this is the one that really gets me excited. And that didn't put him in there. <laughs> is Ja'Cory Watson. Ja'Cory Watson it is has got he has an official visit set up to BC. He's coming on June seventh. He is from Shadow Creek in Texas, and he is a four star wide receiver on the two four seven composite. He is the number two hundred sixty seven uh, national recruit. He has visits set to Houston and BC, but he also has offers from Colorado, Baylor, Arizona State, um, LSU, Michigan, Kansas. Michigan State, Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech. I mean, you name it, he's got an offer from there. And he's considering BC. And you ask yourself, wait, why? Why is why is this guy who's in the heart of Texas leave? Would he even leave Texas to go to a school like BC? It's Daryl Wyatt. Daryl Wyatt, I'm telling you folks, 
is opening doors to wide receivers that you would never get if you had another wide receivers coach. I'm surprised that other staffs haven't seen this yet with him. And the funny thing about Wyatt, if you talk to the staff, is he kind of does his own thing. Last year, when I talked to some of the staff, they they would tell me like, yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what his his big board would look like because he kind of does his own thing. You know, we just kind of let Daryl do his own recruiting, and he kind of, you know, he gets the guys that he needs and whatnot. That's his style, you know. But he connects. That's the big thing with with Daryl Wyatt. Uh, he connects. You see it with recruiting. You see it with the transfer portal. He's the guy that brought you Thomas Castellanos. He's the guy that brought you Ryan O'Keefe. And the, some of the kids this year, whether it be uh, Jerron Bradley or um, D- D- Jordan McDonald, he is a big deal. And he's doing it with the wide receivers as well. So when I see like a kid like Bo McCormick, who is from Massachusetts, and he just committed to Syracuse, he's not rated. He had a couple of offers. He's a wide receiver. And he, he's a running back, too. When I see him commit... And people are like, oh, BC's, you know, they're not closing the, they're not closing the, the, the fence around Massachusetts. It's a position where BC's can afford to go outside their, their walls. They've got some big uh, poker, you know, big sticks in the fire right now. And they've got a couple other names. I'm not sure what they're going to be looking at in terms of position. But even locally, you see guys like uh, Charles Bell from St. Thomas Moore, who is a, um, who's going to be taking an official visit or Jordan Houston, who's his teammate. They could, but well, either, or could play athlete or, I mean, a wide receiver or cornerback, but you can see that he's got a, a wide net around this country that is going to attract some big name wide receivers. And it, it's so cool for Boston college, a, a school that has not typically had success at wide receiver to continue to start putting down a um, a, a uh, foundation for good wide receivers. And of course it starts with Zay Flowers, but you're seeing it continue and continue to build. Um, and it's a lot of that has to do with Wyatt. Now, in our final segment, I want to talk about the transfer for portal in basketball and ask two big questions. What the heck is going on with BC? And who are some names that they could be looking at? I'll answer both of those in just a moment. The sports calendar is loaded with Major League Baseball, the tournament, everything, and fan duels making it even more exciting to get in on the action. This weekend, you know, during the tournament, it was great. I, you could just do straight picks and do a parlay. Pick the teams that you think you're going to win. You could hit. I hit on a five-leg parlay on FanDuel on just straight money line picks, and that covered some of my other picks that weren't so great. But you can start right now because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet on Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and so much more. All you got to do, get your phone out. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is Locked On BC. I am your host, AJ Black, and we're wrapping things up with a little bit of basketball talk here. Now, we are over a week removed from the end of BC's basketball season with their loss in the NIT to UNLV. And since then, the transfer portal has seen 12, I think it's 1,200 players enter in Division I basketball. And the grand total of Boston College players at the time of this recording, and of course, things could change as I'm recording this, is a grand total of zero. There has not been a single player entering the portal. And it interests me for two reasons. I've heard buzz of certain players, and I'm not going to get into, and I've kind of told you some of them in, in previous episodes who I think could possibly leave. You can go back and check those out. But the, the reason that I'm interested is because of that and also because Earl Grant has been making contact with transfers 
And he wouldn't be doing that if all his guys are coming back. Because if all his guys come back, BC can't get any transfers this year. I don't think that's going to be the case. I, And I hope it's not the case because, man, this team needs some help in some big areas. They cannot afford that. So I think that's part of it. The other piece that I I, I wonder why it's taking so slow, and, and I don't like that it's taking so slow for both the team and the players. They're both dragging their feet way too long here because it's putting both of them behind the eight ball. Like if, if a recruit or transfer wants to go somewhere, it doesn't behoove them to wait. They're going to be losing spots on some of these other schools because their other teams are making moves right now. But there was Easter break. There was probably time that he wanted to let them to de- de- decompress and think about it. I would think if I were a betting man, that then if there's going to be players entering the portal in the next 48 hours, I think we'll start to hear. You know, I'm thinking I heard the buzz that I heard was that the meetings to talk about their future with the program was happening early this week. You add in some time to think about it even more after the conversations with Earl Grant. They make their decision. And then, of course, they've got to make their graphics. And I don't know how long those graphics take, but maybe they take like 24 hours that, you know, the thank you so much. I had so great experience, but without further ado, I'm entering the transfer board, that kind of stuff. I think it'll happen in the next 48 hours. Then the big question remains, where does BC go from here? Now, if you go on Twitter, you can see that there's been a number of players that have connected with BC. But a lot of these players, they'll list all the teams they've connected and they've connected with like 35 teams. And it's like, yeah, just because you had a phone call, I don't care about that. It's like, who could possibly go to that next level? Like one name that came up is uh, Hofstra transfer Jaquan Carlos, who is a guard who averaged 10.4 points, 4.4 rebounds and 6.3 assists. You know, good ball moving guard. Uh, he wants to go to the play at the highest level, but he ha- he has been connected with BC. Uh, but he's also been connected with a ton of schools. But for me, that information gives me um, some valuable feedback, which is that BC is looking at guards. There's been a bunch of other guards that they've looked at from a very variety of other teams. So uh, to me, that makes me think that they're expecting a few gu- a guard or two to leave, and that they're going to have top level like starter minute. Um, positions available, you know, Mason Matson, J- J- uh, Jaden Zachary, those types of positions have to wonder that's going to be something they're going to be looking at. Another name that has popped up that I, I think fits a lot of what BC needs is uh, Notre Dame uh, forward. I think he's a forward power forward, uh, Carrie Booth, who is from New Brewster who I believe is is where the, the Langford brothers play uh, played. There's been a bunch of BC players that have gone through that program. He is from Notre Dame. He was a freshman this year. He's 6'10". Um, so you're losing Quinton Post. You have Armani Mighty, who, to me, I'm going to just put it out there, does not look like a starter. We ha- I don't have any clue what Jaden Hastings can do. I know some folks think that he's ready. Not sure there. But if you need a big, you know, you're, you'd love to get a seven foot guy, but maybe a guy like Kerry Booth, someone from the area, someone who's played around this area, someone you recruited, he might be a fit. So that might be another position that you're looking at. Um, and that, that one seems like it might be a little bit more serious. So he could be someone you're looking at. And then finally, the last name I would look at is Jamie Kaiser. Jamie Kaiser was at Maryland. He was someone who very seriously looked at BC and entered the transfer portal after one season uh, with with the Terps. He's a small forward from Virginia, which BC's had uh, success at. He's six six. He was a four star, uh, number seventy five in the country. Um, he's big, <laughs> so that one he you know he's been linked to BC as well. You know, I wonder with Armani Mighty, not Armani Mighty, excuse me, Prince Aligby's struggle, his struggles, would they look for someone else? Maybe, maybe uh, we watched him fl- fa- uh, flame out for BC this, at the end of this year. Would BC potentially 
look for someone that could be a wing. So the short end of this is that BC is looking everywhere right now, but there's no spots open. Maybe there's going to be names popping up soon. That's going to be what we're going to be watching for. And all these names that are popping up, what well, you know, you, you you just look at what they're looking at and go, huh, that seems that makes a lot of sense. Or that that's something that they could use. Right now, I would say they're looking at everything. Like this team next year, depending on who they're losing, they could have needs at guard. They could have needs at wings. They definitely have needs at big. Um, that's all going to be things they're going to be looking at. So we'll be back again tomorrow as we get ready for the end of this week. We'll be looking as BC uh, football starts to get into their last week before the spring game, which is crazy. We're almost at summertime, folks. We'll get into all that. Any breaking news, any transfer portal news, we'll have it here at Locked On BC. Follow along with me at Twitter at AJBlack247. And check me out on Instagram. If you haven't checked out on Instagram, find BC Eagle Insider on Instagram. Um, we put stuff up on there all the time. Thank you all so much. If you're an everyday, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, all of you who are subscribers to the, the podcast and our um, premium service on Eagle Insider, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, you guys make it easy to do what I do. And we'll be back again tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Boston College, your team every day.